Hello all and thank you for being back for another video on my channel. Please go ahead and like and subscribe so you know whenever I post a video. I do just want to give some housekeeping rules and some updates on Dr. Shola. After careful consideration decided that any comments that are deemed disrespectful, offensive in any way by myself will be deleted. Now, I am I, I am all right with a balanced discussion, but we cannot tolerate har harassment. We can't tolerate um, abuse or bullying or offensiveness and we cannot be silenced you know that's what that's what injustice wants to do it wants to silence people trying to expose it for what it is so do not let you all be don't let yourselves be silenced to all of my followers who support me and support Harry and Megan. And as far as Dr. Shola, I have uh, reached out to, since the last time we spoke, I've reached out to UN Women. I've reached out to Black Lives Matter UK, uh, as well as Black Lives Matter US. I've reached out to the Robert F. Kennedy's Human Rights Foundation. And um, I've also reached out to the Met Police, and yes, that is it for now. Um, I will continue to speak up and advocate and nudge these different people to advocate for Dr. Shola because she clearly needs it. Um, I think I may also reach out to Russell Brand. Um, I would encourage all of my followers and everyone is who is in support of uh, Harry and Meghan because we know that Dr. Shola is likely being persecuted directly for her support of Harry and Meghan. Um, so I encourage any of you who like and support my channel and who like and support Harry and Meghan to support Dr. Shola as well. Um, and I will continue to keep you guys updated in any contact that I get back from these advocacy agencies that I reach out to. So one, one way that I would like to provide evidence and proofs of institutional racism is um, much of the things that I'm saying in my videos about how I support Harry and Meghan, the reasons why the UK has been um, corrupt in their coverage of them, um, you know, uh, how certain laws need to be reformed, how certain mentalities and social acceptances need to be reformed. This is not anything new and it is the same thing that me, people of many races are saying in their videos, but you have to question yourself why those who are black and brown, why their channels get inundated so much more with hateful trolls, trolls as comments. That right there is a proof of institutional racism. So ask yourself about that, you know, and don't be complicit do something about it. Um, I really want you guys to go take a look at my video talking about debunking racism. Um, towards the end there, there is a story about a man who was a white supremacist who formed an unlikely friendship with a black woman, with an African-American woman. This happened in the U.S. and he is no longer a racist. There's also um, an example of a, a British guy who is a reformed racist. People who are going to listen to this right now and immediately want to run into my comments and troll and, and spread hateful lies, really go and look at these people who used to be like you, okay? And see how they have changed once they opened themselves up to a view that was outside of their own. And I think that's what racism comes down to at the end of the day. I think um, The other thing that I want to speak on is the question of racism in the UK and my um, authority to speak on this subject. Now, there have been several hateful trolls who have come into my videos, again, only the one supporting Harry and Meghan, none of the other ones, uh, saying that I don't have the authority to speak on this issue, that maybe I should concentrate on the UK, the US, or Portugal, or whatever it is. And guys, World affairs, current affairs, we all have the ability to speak on this. Like, this is just another tactic of the far right and the extremists to try and silence people. And that's how injustice really thrives, you know, is by silencing people. I feel that the UK, um, I'm going to do a video very soon talking about Stormzy because Stormzy 
is um, he had an interview with Sway that that brought him under fire. It was very controversial. And he speaks on sort of black people in the UK, this being the first time ever that they really are openly outspoken. They're proud of their heritage. Um, they are demanding to be respected just as much as anyone else. And generally, I just feel like the US is a little bit further on these discussions around race relations, um, around discrimination, about, around the hate towards uh, black and brown people that really is just ingrained within Western society. Um, these conversations are really just starting in the UK. And I really can believe that. I feel like these conversations have been happening in the US for a very long time. And the extreme behavior and um, outright, you know, outspokenness against quote unquote woke culture, you know, the fact that they weaponize the word woke and against black people being respected in the country that they pay taxes in. Um, I feel like this is, this is reflective of what was happening in the U S in the 19th 60s with the overturning of the Jim Crow laws. So I feel like the UK is a little bit behind in time. Powers that be, the authorities, the monarchy, the firm, um, the the cabinet of the prime minister, all of these, um, even, even going into the parties, the Labour Party, the Tory party, all of these powers that be have some sense of um, exercising of rights that they can be doing to advocate for black and brown people in the UK and making sure that they are safe, respected, that they have just as much right as anyone to freedom of speech. They have as much right to earn their living as have as much right to advocate for what they believe in, as long as they are not breaking any laws. And so, um, I, I, I think that we need to make sure that we are there for the UK in these discussions and not allow ourselves to be silenced. And if you, you know, there is a lot of conjecture and speculation that, you know, Pr Princess Meghan never received racism in the UK. The UK isn't a racist place. You know, anyone who says this, I just see racism written all over that, whether it's conscious or unconscious. And, um, we could talk about all of these reasons every day. We can talk about the vile articles that have been written about her. We could talk about the fact that Archie's color was discussed in the royal family. We can talk about the Straight Outta Compton article. Um, we can talk about looking at the robust, nonstop coverage of Harry and Meghan that are full of lies, that are full of derogatory um, context, and look at that paired up against Kate and William, and we can know that that is institutional racism at play. We can explain that. We can explain how black people being called the N-word um, really affects them their whole life. We can explain all of these different things. And anyone who is racist will come up with a way to say that's not racist. So our inclination will be to just stop trying to talk sense into them, to stop trying to show them a perspective outside of their own. Um, but we cannot stop, guys. We cannot stop. The fight and the struggle is way, way, way too important to stop. And um, again, I really feel like in the UK, this is like the, the US civil rights movement of the 1960s. Don't allow yourself don't allow yourself to be silenced and, um, you know, keep, keep raging against the animal that is racism. Okay. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into the video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for being back with me for another video today. If you would like to support this channel, please do me a favor and go ahead and click the subscribe and like button and click the bell. That way you'll know whenever I post a video. Now, um, I do want to put a little disclaimer to this video before I get started. I have made an executive decision on my channel because I get a lot of trolls sliding into the comments who seem to think that they have the power to silence me just because I support Harry and Meghan. And literally, they'll say things like, 
stop making videos today, pack your bags, get off YouTube. And I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> wow. Wow. It's just like, you know, abusers try so hard to silence their victims because they don't want something being exposed. So I have made an executive decision as the owner of this here channel um going forward any offensive comments any uh derogatory comments that involve name calling um that involve harassment or bullying of any sorts any sort of violent um content which i haven't received any anything violent yet um which you know um if that were to happen i would take all legal avenues to stop it because abusers must be stopped um, anything that is deemed extremely offensive will be taken off now um, you know having a difference of opinion I, I, I want to very much clarify that offensive comments will be taken off but comments that just have a difference of opinion and are striking up conversation with different standpoints but respectfully those will remain because i'm a big advocate and not silencing people and i don't want to silence people um but i i also cannot tolerate injustice i can't tolerate people trying to come on the channel and spread hate spread lies spread bigotry and so you guys should know that going forward but i can say i do want people to see this craziness so you will be featured on story time or you could be featured i won't say every single crazy rank comment that i get will be featured on story time but i will feature some of you and we know you guys like attention so i i look at harry and megan and i can basically see it you know because i have empathy and emotional intelligence and so I can put myself in the shoes of other people, but a lot of people can't really do that. And I think part of that is mental illness and awareness needs to be raised on that. But I think another part of that is just not really wanting to. Um, and that's okay. People move and things at their own time and no one should force you into your own self-discovery or self-realization. But um, I basically have restarted looking at Harry and Meghan and when I look at it, I can almost see it through the lens of these people who are disparaging them online, who are constantly, constantly online talking about them, who are calling them whiners, whingers, babies, narcissists, um, you know, serial liars, yeah, pregnancy fakers, all of this stuff. Because in order to look at what I'm looking at, the Harry and Meghan, you know, show or to look at their entire um journey and say that they're liars say that they're whining say that they betray the royal family say that they're trying to overthrow the monarchy i i would see you as a very unhappy person and i would see you as someone who has bought into the smear campaign you've bought into the hate so i do want to talk about um Empathy. Again, you know, I just feel like people are lacking in empathy and they don't see how they're coming across as so offensive. And some people do see that they're coming across as offensive and they like it and they continue to do it because there's other things going on. Either there's psychological things going on or they are facing the very dire economic circumstances of what's happening in the world right now. I won't just say it's limited to the UK because the world is struggling right now um but they might be taking that stuff out whether they're dealing with poverty they're dealing with domestic violence they're dealing with this they're dealing with that they're taking it out on this woman and it is not fair it's not justice it's not appropriate and um you know i think that you know people come up into my comments and they say don't lecture us don't lecture us well don't be insensitive <laughs> That's how you avoid that. If you don't want to be lectured by society on how you're being a bigot, don't be insensitive. It's that simple. 
Um, and yeah, I, I look at Harry and Meghan and guys, it's so beautiful. Like from Lesotho, you see uh, Prince Harry and Lesotho and he's coming of age and how much he gets from there to him relating that to when he goes to Botswana with Meghan for five days and um, even that little clip of them running down the mountain, you know, this like a bunch of snow. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And to think that people would see that and they would be so hateful of seeing true love, of seeing people who love each other. And, and, and I don't have to sit here and trash Kate and William because Kate and William, for all intents and purposes to me, seem like they love each other too. So why can't Harry and Meghan have their love as well? Why does it have to be one or the other? You know, um, it just goes back to, it, it, it feels so evil when I hear people online say, you should have stayed silent. Like, guys, just come on. Can we think for a second? Does that not sound like an abuser? You should have stayed silent. Like, that has, like, it, on the one hand, it's petulant and childish. But on the other hand, it's evil. So it is, that is scary. It is scary. I mean, oh wow. But I look at Harry and Meghan and I see her being, you know, a kid and writing, you know, to get both men and women in this, in this commercial, you know, advocating for more representation for women, for gender equality. At 11 and I'm just like oh that's beautiful she's been a humanitarian her whole life I can see how haters can see that and see oh, well she's just been a troublemaker her whole life <laughs> you don't see how I'm saying you had to be a very unhappy person to do that or brainwashed unhappy or brainwashed I just don't see any other one or you're just misinformed okay I see her, her and, and Harry and that trip to, uh, to, to, to Botswana and I just say, oh my God, look at their love story. It's so beautiful. It's so iconic. And I can just see how haters are just saying, fake, 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 fake. She's a narcissist and she's trying to control him. I can't see how you would say that unless you're a very unhappy person. Where, you know, I look at her and I'm just like, oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. She is radiant. Her hair is beautiful. Her curls look so voluminous and lush. Um, her, her outfits are so beautiful and she's, she carries herself so well. I see that and I can see how haters will say, oh my gosh. You know, she's such a narcissist. She's so into herself. She just loves looking at herself in the mirror. Only an unhappy person would say that. Do you, are you getting the, the connection here? Um, and, um, you know, in the, in the areas where I look at the, the show. And I say things like, oh, I feel sorry for them. Like, shh, that's, that's. That's really great. Yeah, I feel sorry for them. I can see the way that the haters will say, oh, they're liars. You know, I can see the way and then I say, oh, I agree with them. I really agree with them on that. I can see exactly how the haters will say, uh, you should have shut up. And, and, and that right there, this, this, this silencing that tries to happen in the UK, what I want to relate it to is Stormzy. Now, I'm going to link in the description below uh, an interview between Sway and Stormzy because a lot of people, the offensive ones, the creepy crawlies that call up in my comments, um, they say, oh, you're race baiting, you know, you're, you're pulling the race card, etc., etc. And I get the impression, and again, guys, I really like a lot of UK culture. I would not be on here talking about Real Housewives of Cheshire, Stormzy, Jack Whitehall, The Tudors, Victorians. Like, if I didn't like parts of British culture, I wouldn't know these things. I, I literally would just be an uninformed punk, country bumpkin American like so many people are who don't know anything outside of their own culture. Those are the parts of the culture that's beautiful. But this complete gaslit hating, you know, 
the, the oh, you're, you're race baiting, uh, weaponizing of the word woke. That's, that's what I don't like, you know, and that exists in the U.S. too. So we can't just like, you know, say, oh, that's just the U.K. and whatever. The U.S. has that problem too. It's okay, guys. But Stormzy, um, I'll link it in the description. He has an interview on SiriusXM with Sway. Basically, as someone who is an insider within the rap community in the U.S., and I do think that he's an, a rapper in his own regard, but he mostly um, is like an expert. He's like one of those industry experts. And so he did an interview with Stormzy, and um, it's, it's great, guys. Stormzy basically talks about how black pride, like being proud of being black, you know, and advocating for justice, you know, advocating for the removal of institutional racism. Um, he, Stormzy basically says this is all kind of new for Britain, you know, like, and, and I can get that. I really, really can understand that. Whereas I feel like America is younger and these conversations have been a little bit more open, I will say. And so I do think that America is in a better place for this, you know. But I don't think that that means that the UK should try in any way to follow in the footsteps of America. I don't think that, you know, the UK should be trying to use the same formula because it's two different countries, you know. Like, I think that um, the UK doesn't have to try to be, you know, a little... The London doesn't try to have to try to be a little Hollywood, you know. The UK doesn't have to try to be America or anything like that. But I do think that people need to prepare themselves to make themselves more comfortable for these conversations. Because when Jewish people speak of the Holocaust, people don't attack Jewish people about that. So why is it that people do it when black people talk about it? I'm going to let you sit and think about that for a second. Um, but we need to talk about the incredibleness that is Doria. So... You know, there were these articles circulating about if Doria had a, a jail record. And I'm sorry, if it doesn't come out of the lips of Doria or Meghan Markle or Prince Harry, I don't believe a word of what these people say. Because it's like, it's out of hand. It's really, really out of hand. And um, the UK is, 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 is having a rude awakening because... It's trying to hang on to a bunch of um, hatred and feeling like you have the final say, feeling like you have all of the control and you have the control to silence people, to choose whether or not they want, they can share their story of their background, of their ancestral history or not. You don't have a choice. This is a democracy. Like, this is 2023. So, um, yeah, I... The negative stuff that comes out from the media, and it's almost like now I'm at the point where I know almost immediately if it's from a deranger or if it's from Success Squad or people who just generally are more unbiased to this whole thing. It's like I know almost immediately. But Doria, you know, so in the show, it basically talks about, um, you know, it talks about race, okay? We get into race. Megan describes when she's a teenager. I think she's about 15 or 16 years old. And you can tell that Megan, you know, for the people who have the argument that she has never really been raised as a black woman, and, and black people are saying this too, white people and black people. Um, and you guys know how I feel about speaking in these terms of white and black. Life is not white and black, you know, but hey black but you know I, I would rather speak in terms of origin of culture of nationality instead of white and black but again those are the social constructs that society has created so we have to speak in those terms people white and black say that Megan has never experienced life as a black person until she entered the royal family well if that's the case okay but does this does that make this right seriously go ahead and think about that does that make this right if this woman lived her life you know never even hearing anyone outside of perhaps music or the tv saying the n-word because she this is where she's at in the movie so she explains how when she's 15 or 16 um she is 
uh, a part of this white gown event that happens at, um, I think it's called the Hollywood Bowl. And it's like a big stadium and there's a bunch of debutantes, almost debutante type dressed girls, you know, young girls. And there's an event and on the way out, there's this woman who doesn't seem to know where to go through the exit or whatever. And Doria and Megan are in the car. And so um, they've been sitting there forever. And her mom, I think, hunks the horn at her. And the woman in front of her turns around and calls her the N-word. And that, at the ripe old age of 15 or 16 or however old Megan was, that was the first time that she had really heard it in that context. And Doria goes on, she says that her mom was mortified, mortified, you know, she, she just clasps her hands on the wheel, her knuckles get white, she's got the face, the, the, the comportment of a ghost, she's, she's like a sheet, a white as a sheet, you know, like, even the reaction of Doria, you can see just from that, the way that her reaction, which is to be mortified, to be deeply hurt, you can see the kind of person that Doria is in that. She didn't get out the car. She didn't say, oh, I'm going to beat your butt, uh, B-I-T-C-H. You know, like, this is a sweet, kind, sensitive soul, and she didn't deserve that. But the bigger question of Megan not really experiencing or understanding the, the negative aspects of her blackness until she married into the royal family, okay. If that's your argument, okay. But does that make it right? No, it does not. So she talks about after that experience um, with the royal family and her getting those, uh, you know, those pieces, those tabloid pieces that were basically painting her out to be this, this, you know, ghetto chick from, from Compton, LA and, you know, she lived near Skid Row. Um, and then the harassment, the death threats, the, the constant just vitriol. Megan's like, okay, Doria's like, she tells Megan, this is about race. You know, this is about race. And this reminds me of so many conversations I've had with my mom, you know, as a black parent, even though, you know, once, once my husband and I had children, they'll be mixed race and they'll all be whole conversations about that, but they'll be partly black. And... Just like there is a sex talk, there's a black talk. There's a black talk that you have to have. And I don't think people really understand that. And I don't think people really want to understand that. Now, with Jewish people, again, that, like, if, they, if people explain how Jewish people have been persecuted, there's nothing wrong with that. But if black people talk about it, a lot of people want to shut them down. Why is that? And let me not forget to add that the whole cusp of civilization was born in Africa. We all come from Africa. Like, look up the science if you don't know about that. So why is it when black people talk about the persecu their ancestral persecution, it's not okay for them? And I feel like, okay, I won't get into Kanye West, but he tried to kind of get into that, but he didn't sound so politically correct. So whatever, we'll keep moving on. So Megan basically, Doria says this is about race, you know, after she receives all of this, this story planting, this harassment from the media, um, crazy, dangerous, uh, you know, um, vilification and, and threatening from, from people, from the public, um, Doria says, I hope you know this is about race, basically, you know this is about race, right? And Doria her being darker skinned, you can also tell Doria is the type of woman who really has had a metamorphosis on of her own. We see Megan's metamorphosis coming into her, the realities of her ancestral roots through the racism she's received from the United Kingdom. Um, na not just the United Kingdom, namely the, the tabloid media of the United Kingdom and the corruption of their interaction with the firm and all of that. But um, you can see that same journey from, from Doria, and I think every person of color or every person who even associates themselves with people of color, that's that transformation that they have to go through to understand, oh crap, everybody's history is not the same. <laughs>
<laughs> and you know, in that, that interview I was talking about with Stormzy, he basically said, the black experience, you can go to any country and you know what's up, you know? Any single country and you know what's up. And uh, I find that funny because Louis C.K., even though he's had his issues back before when he was in the good graces of the public, he said, you know, as a white man, I basically can go to any time period in history and be okay. And be okay. If I was black, uh, that probably wouldn't be the case. And that's the case. So as someone who will one day probably have my little mixed race children asking me these questions as well, I get it. So Doria says, you know, this is about race. And Megan says, mommy, I don't want to talk about this. I've had so many moments with my own mom like that. I don't want to talk about this. Okay, I get it. But these conversations need to be had. That's what it comes down to at the end of the day. So, <laughs> this this straight out of Compton skid row stuff. It is um, a, now, probably not as much when Megan was growing up, but now it's a big part of the gay community. And I feel like in the last 20 years, it also has become much more diverse. Um, probably back in the 80s and the 90s when Megan grew up, it was likely more of a, uh, there were more African Americans in that community. But West Hollywood is a nice area, it is a very nice area. Um, even it, when Megan was a child, I, this, this would be a place where she would have had a very nice upbringing. And California is not like the rest of America. And Los Angeles is not like the rest of California. It's like Los Angeles, people from Los Angeles and people from California, really, they just got that like sun-soaked mentality. And so um, I think that's a part of the culture that people really don't understand. The same way that Megan really didn't understand William and Kate and how she said like that, that, that exterior, that formality that you see in public doesn't really go away in private. I feel like the way that she didn't understand that, a lot of people from the UK really can't understand her culture of the, her where she comes from. And part of it is because they don't want to. You know what, let me just pause for a moment and say that uh, if you haven't watched my video, Nadra Tries to Debunk Racist, I really do look from a scientific perspective about why people do the things that they do, why they feel the way that they wait, why people can remain prejudiced and, and not really know why. Because people really want to believe that they're not racist, that the system is not racist, but that they hate Megan because of all of these lies that the media has told them. And they cannot understand the ancestral history and the current event history, you know, black people's place in society even in the worst in world today, they cannot wrap their head around that. Again, like we said, for Jewish people, when they talk about their persecution, it is okay. But when black people talk about it, uh, race baiting, we're said that we're being race baiting, we're pulling out the black card, etc. It's like Stormzy said in the video, the black card is not a card people want to pull out. You think that people, we just want to be sitting here talking about this all day? Absolutely not. We want to live our life in peace. And so we really have a, a responsibility as humanity to stop being so close-minded, you know? And in that video where I try to debunk racist, one of the conclusions that I have come to is that your exposure to other cultures, I feel really has a direct relationship with whether or not you're racist and whether or not you can understand racist concepts because a lot of people say they cannot understand how the UK could be institutionally racist. You know, they really, just, they cannot understand it. And I get that. I sympathize with that. I feel, like I said, I feel like America's in a much better shape than the UK in that sense because these are new conversations for the UK. But again, these conversations need to be had. I think one of the biggest, like Mark Twain said, like I said in another video, one of the best ways to defeat bigotry is by exposing yourself to other cultures. And so um, I, I feel like a lot of people will say, oh, well, I have lots of black friends. I have lots of uh, Asian, Indian, uh, Muslim friends, whatever. But 
these are the type of friendships where they just talk at the water cooler at work. These are the type of friendships where, you know, they are friends on Facebook and that is the extent of their friendship. No, I'm talking about real friendships. I'm talking about the people you need to call up. You call up when you need a, a ride to the airport. I'm talking about you go over to their house for a barbecue. I'm talking about they send you pictures of their kids when they're born. I'm talking about real friendships. And I guarantee you, most of the people who are spreading all these lies and targeting Meghan Markle with all of this hate online, I guarantee you they do not have a diverse set of friends, if they have any friends. <laughs> um... And then, on top of that, you have to also look at how much you have traveled. I feel like traveling to other parts of the world, traveling to other neighborhoods, um, that also is a killer of prejudice. Now, if you're going to go to other parts of the world and just point your nose down on people, I don't know that that's really going to be a killer of prejudice, but um, yes. It, you have to get to know other cultures. I mean, I have friends from so many different backgrounds. I feel like the reason why I say black and white, talking in black and white is so bizarre to me is because I have friends who are Korean. I have friends who are Japanese. I have friends who are Portuguese. I have friends who are Spanish, who are Colombian, who are Cameroonian, who are African, Nigerian, British, Filipino. You know, and I have a American friends who have Irish ancestry, American friends who have Italian ancestry. Yeah, and that is okay. And we're not constantly talking to each other about white and black or our race. So um, I just have to caveat that with saying this, that I, I feel like these people who went and said that Meghan Markle is from straight out of Compton and all of this stuff, these seem like the type of people who don't travel in circles of other cultures because if you did, you would know that this is highly offensive and it has no place in 2023. I feel like I need to talk about this because I think a lot of people, um, namely the, the British public who have vilified Meghan, they don't know much about the geography of America. They don't know much about um, sort of the infrastructure of California, of Los Angeles, where Megan grew up. And so I feel like I need to break this down for you guys. So um, to my understanding, where Meghan Markle grew up is in West Hollywood. Okay. Think of it like this, UK. I'm speaking directly to UK because we know where most of this hate is coming from. You guys' media needs to be reformed. The way that you have these modern conversations between your people needs to be reformed. You know, the, the, the extent that you all are trying to go to to silence Harry and Meghan, to silence their supporters, all based on lies. It's like you're these bulldogs fighting on behalf of the monarchy. And it doesn't have to be that way. You're just, it's, it's counterproductive. Focus on the economic issues that you all are having in your country. Like, it's it's not good. I don't know if you notice, but it's not good. It's not the right stuff to focus on. And so I'm going to I'm gonna give one, uh, an example to compare West Hollywood, West Hollywood, Skid Row. West Hollywood, Skid Row. So. As someone who lived in London for six months, people tell me, like I said, like they said, oh, you don't have any qualifications to speak on this because you lived in London for a little while, whatever, okay. So, you guys know of a little quartier called Canary Wharf, okay. Canary Wharf is in quite close proximity to Covent Garden, is it not? When you think about it proportionally, respectively, two very, very different neighborhoods, not that far apart, huh? Possibly the same way that West Hollywood and Skid Row can be kind of close. And for my U.S. friends or anybody who's visited America and been to San Francisco, for example, we're speaking about the Tenderloin District on this channel. Oh, Lord, I feel like there is some trauma from the Tenderloin District because you know what? The Tenderloin District is the first place that I saw a crack pipe. Yeah, a used crack pipe. It's just like, bleh. 
Um, it's rough, guys. The Tenderloin is a rough area in San Francisco. But the Tenderloin, in proportion, respectively, is not that far from Presidio Heights or Pack Heights. You know, do you see the point that I'm getting to? You know, like, she didn't grow up in a rough area. She grew up clearly and cultivated in love. And the majority of that is contributed to Doria. She didn't grow up with Samantha Markle. She didn't grow up, you know, with that hate that Samantha Markle, I think, went through. And... I think, I, I don't know, I don't know for sure, but I think that Thomas Markle was physically abusive to Samantha Markle and to Thomas Jr. We see just from the way that he, you know, his behavior, Thomas Markle, maybe not all of um, the lights are on there, and so... You know, generational trauma is a B-I-T-C-H, as we said. And so Doria introduced Megan to love. And, and, and we really would not be talking about any of this. I have to remind you. They, they, they like to say, oh, you're criticizing her, that side of her family. You're criticizing Samantha. You know, and, and they don't see that them sticking up for the white side of her family is racist. I, I, don't, I don't know. Okay. Again. Okay, it's a process with UK. It was a process for the US too. It's okay, but we're gonna help get you there. But guys, she didn't grow up in that same house. She didn't grow up in that same mentality. Meghan Markle grew up under the beauty that is Doria. You see it. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. That's all we've got for today. Please be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Click the bell so you'll know whenever I post a video, our next video about Meghan Markle. We'll talk about how we know that the UK misses her, and that's where all of this concept, uh, this, this conjecture towards her is coming from. Be sure to click that bell so you'll know when I post that video. I'll also be coming back soon with the second part of the Disney Channel for Millennials versus for Gen Z um, video. So tell me what you guys thought about this in the comments. Thank you so much for being here again, and I'll see you next time. Bye.